In 1980, a tomb was discovered in Jerusalem. Recently, the documentary, The Lost Tomb of Jesus, claimed that these two bone boxes found in the tomb contained the bones of Jesus Christ and his wife. But what does the evidence say? Was Jesus married? Have his bones really been found? See for yourself here on Expedition Bible. In our search for answers to this serious challenge against Christianity, the team traveled to Jerusalem where we met with one of the tomb's original excavators, Dr. Shimon Gibson. Um, quite frequently people will say to me, well, have you heard about this, this uh, tomb of Jesus which has been found in, in Tarpia? What do you think about it? Could it be the tomb of, uh, of Jesus? And the first thing I say uh, to, to people is, well, I actually excavated uh, at that tomb. And they sort of they look, look at me in a very puzzled <laughs> way and they say, so is this then the, 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 the tomb, the family tomb of, uh, of Jesus? Uh, was Jesus buried there? Have, have his bones been found? So the tomb is down here. This is it. This is the place. See? This is a slab which is above the shaft which leads down to the so-called family tomb of Jesus. And I emphasize so-called. Dr. Gibson drew the original plan of this tomb back in 1980. From his drawings, we were able to reconstruct what this tomb looked like in ancient times. This stone bench is where a body would have been laid out in burial. After about a year, once the body had decomposed, the bones would then be gathered and placed inside a limestone bone box called an ossuary, and placed inside one of these smaller chambers that are carved in the walls of the tomb. In some cases, a name would be inscribed on the side of the ossuary to identify the person or sometimes people whose remains were contained inside. So what would the implications be for Christians if they really have found the bones of Jesus here? I think if the bones of Jesus were actually found, then that would imply that Jesus of Nazareth did not rise from the dead, that the earliest disciples were either massively deceived or massive deceivers themselves, and that therefore Christianity is basically a sham. I would cease to be a Christian. I would give up. Christian belief because I think it's absurd to believe that someone is risen from the dead and therefore immortal and, and glorious when in fact he's died and rotted away. That would be pure mythology and I don't believe in mythology. Since the implications of the claim that the bones of Jesus were found here are so serious for Christians, it's important that we understand exactly what was found in this tomb. Dr. Amos Cloner, who was in charge of the excavation of the Talpia tomb, along with Dr. Gibson, take us back to their experience in 1980, when the tomb was first discovered. One evening, I received a call from Dr. Amos Cloner, saying to me, there's a tomb which Yosef Gat is excavating, would you be willing to pop along and investigate, help him record the tomb? I asked Shimon Gibson to draw the plan and prepare a sketch, a section of the cave. I went uh, the following morning, uh, arrived at the site. There were ten osheries, uh, all in all, and uh, such a, uh, I recorded onto my plan. I would say that this is a common Jewish tomb from the first century AD um, with osheries that belong to the family members and they scrawled on the sides of them uh, uh, family member names. And that's about it. Generally speaking, the, the tomb at the time looked a common one, a, an ossuary burial place. In this case, ten ossuaries with six inscriptions. 
This is considered a common tomb because the names inscribed on the ossuaries are common names. Epigrapher Dr. Stephen Fawn studies the inscriptions on the hundreds of ossuaries stored in this Israeli warehouse. This is one of the Talpio tomb ones. We have joined Dr. Fawn on this particular day because he will be pulling aside the ossuaries from the Talpia tomb to further study their inscriptions. In front of us we have three of the six ossuaries that were inscribed in the uh, Talpia tomb. Of these inscriptions, the most controversial reads Yeshua bar Yosef, which translates into English as Jesus, son of Joseph. As uh, Yeshua um, the son of Joseph. The following clip from the lost tomb of Jesus sensationalizes the importance of this inscription. And on one of the ossuaries discovered in the Talpiot tomb, written in Aramaic, was an astonishing name Yeshua Bar Yosef. They've evaluated this from the standpoint of the common person on the street rather than according to what the common person on the street, let's say 2,000 years ago, would understand if you saw that there was a Jesus, son of Joseph. These are very, very common names, and it's kind of making uh, the uh, mountain of a, out of a molehill type, type of thing. There were at least two other ossuaries on which the name Yeshua bar Yosef were found um, during the 20th century. One of them was found in 1945. The headlines of the newspapers were half of the page that the remains of the family of Jesus were found by a Jewish archaeologist in Jerusalem, etc. But I'm not surprised at all because these are the most common names. This is really a uh, very common set of names that you're going to expect to find in just about any family. 5% of the population would have the name Jesus. 10% of the population would have either the name um, Joseph or Mary. In fact, it might be more like 15% for the name Mary. In fact, in Jerusalem, at the time of Jesus, there was a very small variety of names in common use. Scholars have estimated that a pool of only 16 names accounted for nearly 75% of the population of the time. All the names found in the Talpia tomb come from the list of these most common 16 names of the period. Mary Maria is found twice in the, in the tomb. Yosef or Yose, the short form, is found, found twice in the tomb. We have uh, Judas, Judah, found on, on the tomb. Certainly we have uh, Mara, Martha, we have Jesus, Yeshua, and we have Matai found in that. And these are all quite common. In fact, these are in the, the top um, 12 names found in, the, uh, in Jewish names of that day. Since the Talpia tomb contains common names, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to identify with any one family because the names could easily represent practically any family living at the time. To highlight the Talpia tomb from around a thousand other first century tombs that have been found in and around Jerusalem, you would have to argue that the inscribed names found inside were somehow unique. This is exactly what certain filmmakers and authors have attempted to do. The following clip from The Lost Tomb of Jesus is a good example of this. Then, on a fifth ossuary, they uncovered another inscription. The inscription has two parts. The second part reads Mara, while the first part 
is a diminutive of Mariamne. Let's say in this very tomb of Talpiot, the second Mary right. was clearly identifiable as Mary Magdalene, let's say. Right. What would you be your reaction then along with, in, inside this cluster? It would be fascinating and certainly draw much more attention and raise many more questions. But is there any reason to connect this inscription with Mary Magdalene? Here, look, look right here. We have the, the squared script M-A-R-I-A-M-E, Mariame. This is merely Mariame. It is no unique name. It's the most common name used for the formal form of Mariam or Mary on the inscriptions of that day from the first century and therefore it is taken out of the loop in terms of some significant name for identifying that tomb. The connection between Maria Mene and Maria Magdalena is, is, is insufficient at all. This is why the filmmakers went looking for another unique name in the tomb. That's why they started pursuing uh, Yose. And as it turns out, it's just another desperate attempt to try to link this tomb with the family of Jesus. You have a, a whole bunch of unique things. Yosa, which you find in this tomb, in that specific variation of the name you only find in the Gospel of Mark as a brother of Jesus, only in this tomb. The, the name Yose is being merely the informal form of, of Joseph is not unique to this tomb. The word Yosef is found several times on other ossuaries. Two ossuaries were found in the Talpiot tomb that bear the name Jesus. One is Jesus son of Joseph and the other reads Judah son of Jesus. This means that the Jesus that was buried here was the son of Joseph but he was also the father of Judah. This would disqualify this tomb as the family tomb of Jesus of Nazareth, as there is no evidence that he was married or had children. Yet this clip from the lost tomb of Jesus makes both these claims. Judah, son of Jesus. The New Testament doesn't say that Jesus had a son. But perhaps in this instance, Archaeology forces us to throw a different light on the New Testament. From a purely historical standpoint, I don't think there's any reason at all to think that Jesus of Nazareth was married or had children. Quite the contrary, in fact. You know, the inscriptions that are on these ossuaries, <clears throat> of course, are not at all uh, uh, what they purported them to be. And they, those misinterpretations were used by the filmmakers to try to support a theory that is untenable, that this is the family tomb of Jesus. I believe that this burial chamber has nothing to do with the family from Nazareth. The tomb itself merely has common names. It did before and it does today. Uh, during the making of this uh, television documentary, uh, The Lost Tomb of uh, Jesus, uh, the director Ask me very uh, openly, do I think this is the tomb of uh, Jesus? Is the Talpiot tomb uh, the family tomb of Jesus? And my answer was no. The filmmakers now utilize forensic archaeologist Stephen Cox to remove bone samples from two of the Talpiot tomb ossuaries. Uh, in the documentary, my uh, expertise was used to collect material that was found in the ossuaries. Despite the scholarly conclusion that the ossuary inscribed Jesus, son of Joseph, has no connection with Jesus of Nazareth, the following clip from the lost tomb of Jesus heavily insinuates that it does. just one of those moments where you're struck to a kind of silence, uh, knowing that you're holding the chemical history from the ossuary that may actually have contained the remains of Jesus of Nazareth. 
Stephen Cox also took a sample from the ossuary inscribed Mary Omne. The two samples were then DNA tested. The result